This week in the parish of bourses and market structure, competition in Australia, SEBI to T plus zero, ICE make mortgages work, is Gary Gensler finances Kardashian, and Elizabeth Sam dies. My name is Patrick L. Young. Welcome to the Bourse Business Weekly Digest. It's the Exchange Invest Weekly Podcast, episode 211. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. This is a very brief reduction of highlights amongst the key headlines from the week in market structure. All the analysis of the many happenings from the past seven days can be found in Exchange Invest's daily subscriber newsletter, The Unique Guide to the Bourse Business, sent daily to your inbox. More details at exchangeinvest.com. We start with some unfortunate news from ASEA. The African Parish Association have been forced to cancel their upcoming annual conference in Cairo from November 6th to the 8th, with a letter to members noting this decision was not made lightly and the ASEA president has explored every possible avenue to proceed with the conference as planned. However, several factors beyond our control, including the exit of Mr. Rami El Dukhani, former chairman of Egyptian Stock Exchange, have led us to this difficult conclusion. It's a great shame and hopefully the next event can take place smoothly in 2024. One place where it's anything but smooth was, of course, BitCarnage. In BitCarnage this week, Binance said everything was even more cushy than usual, despite an outage, some resignations and so forth. And who are we to disbelieve them? Elsewhere in the crypto community, there was a mixture of whinging as usual, in most parts with many emulating Violet Elizabeth bought from the just William books of childhood, with her catchphrase, I'll squeam and I'll squeam until I'm thick. The big news of the week, lisps aside, was that the CFTC preempted IOSCO with a move which effectively kills DeFi. Not that you've seen it being headlined as such yet. Then again, we've said this was inevitable for years. Meanwhile, it's now four against one in the SBF trial, as Ryan Salem forfeited a vast swathe of Tony Airbnb Haven Lennox, Massachusetts, plus a Porsche, etc., and has pleaded guilty. Meanwhile, headline of the week was the 11,196-year sentence for fraud handed down to former Thodex CEO, Farouk Fatih Ozar. Some might say he was lucky in only getting 11,196 years. Prosecutors wanted him to serve 40,562 years. If you enjoyed this excerpt, you may be interested to know that you can read BitCarnage every day in Exchange Invest. Alternatively, if you want to follow BitCarnage, the daily update on the happenings in the world of crypto and digital assets, you can find BitCarnage as a standalone on Substack. ICE made headlines last week, of course, with the closing of their magnificent deal for Black Knight. The man who bought the NYSE just made an $11.9 billion bet that he can fast-track your fortune for less than you're paying now. Far less, indeed, the headline ran. It was a great summary in Fortune magazine of the ICE play for the clunky mortgage processing market, which is now more comprehensive as an offering than I think even qualified as comprehensive in the home loan biz just a few years ago. This is a brilliant article. It breaks down the egregious cost, $8,000 per application, which ICE can surely reduce to basis points and still profit handsomely. The resulting vertical is most impressive post-acquisition of Black Knight, and as we know, ICE integration is always state-of-the-art for any sector, not just the exchange parish. Down under, Australia have passed a law to encourage competition for the main market operator ASX. Equally, ASX's new chess oversight group has been put on notice by ASIC's Greg Metcalf. It's more of a marker than a serious revolution, but at least in Canberra they opted to pass some legislation pushing towards more competition and clearing and settlement beyond the ludicrously flawed and well, seemingly at the moment according to ASX's incapacity, irreplaceable chess monopoly. In New York, Nasdaq have relaunched their reimagined market site. More TV studio space, a live CNBC studio, and more are the highlights. Elsewhere, SGX, they're reorganizing their business model to strengthen their position as a multi asset exchange. And there are big moves afoot in the clearing and settlement department. Philippine Stock Exchange, Manila has now moved to T plus two days, having been T plus three until just the other day, in fact. But in India, where they managed to achieve T plus one settlement in January, it now looks as if they might be seeking 
T plus an hour to come in by the end of October 2024. Incredible progress from T plus forever to T plus zero in barely a generation. Johannesburg Stock Exchange, they're teaming up with ESCOM, the power generator, to figure out how they can manage to finance the expansion of the grid. Massive problems, of course, in South Africa, where once upon a time it had second to none infrastructure, but nowadays is sorely lacking, even within Europe. Sad news as well, the real estate stock exchange IPSX is going to be winding down its operations. Not clear what's going to happen to the license there, but it looks as if it's going to be closed down. And the SEC charged alternative investment platform Yield Street for misleading investors. Thanks for listening to Exchange Invest Weekly. We welcome your feedback. You can contact me directly, patrick at derivativesvision.com with any comments. Meanwhile, if you enjoyed this show, we would welcome you giving us a thumbs up. Or if you have time, a positive review will always be welcome wherever you find this podcast. Just the one set of results this week in the parish. TICE, the International Stock Exchange, which is really the Channel Island Stock Exchange with bells and whistles added on around the edges they announced record turnover 5.2 million pounds and profit after tax improved by 15.8 percent to 2.4 million pounds that's roughly three million dollars first half listings declined from 487 to 375 in a difficult market but that still vastly outpaces the rest of the world via the tice specialist niche New markets this week. Welcome to New Amex. New Am Exchange is the new brand for the merged exchanges of Santiago, Lima and Colombia. I like it. Besides, amalgamating the first syllable of either of the cities or the nations merging generally leads to a brand akin to a medicine featured on primetime US TV news advertisements. The concept of a new American exchange is ca- encapsulated elegantly in New Amex. Good luck to CEO JP Cordoba and the New Amex team. In Bangladesh, their Securities and Exchange Commission there are finalising rules to set up a commodity exchange, and Iran's Free Zones High Council are looking to launch an international stock exchange, albeit possibly not as international as it might be given the many nations that have sanctions on Iran. Over in Deal News this week, just one story there. The London Stock Exchange... Well, am I alone in finding this richly amusing? The LSEG is such a magnet for the trading of stock, an epicentre of capital, that it had a massive shareholding group last week selling stakes off market. Doesn't that rather undermine the bit in your brand that goes between London dot 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 and group? If you're trying to grapple with where the future of exchanges are going to be, then consider a copy of my book, Victory or Death, Blockchain, Cryptocurrency and the Fintech World. It's published by DV Publishing and it is available via Ingram Worldwide. Meanwhile, while you're waiting for your copy of Victory or Death to arrive via DV Books and Ingram Worldwide, check out our live stream Tuesday, 6 o'clock London time in the evening, 1 o'clock New York lunchtime, the IPO Vid live show. Catch the back episodes on LinkedIn and YouTube via IPO Vid. We had a spectacular show last Tuesday as we returned on the 12th. IPO Vid 116 with, with Reiner Zittelman, our returning guest. He was discussing his fantastic study, a book bestseller indeed, The Wealth Elite. Our next show coming up on the 19th of September, we're going to have City Panjandrum, that's City of London Panjandrum, Mark Wheatley, and we're going to be discussing From the City to Space. That brings us elegantly to have some space for our finance book of the week as we build out a bookshelf of interesting tomes pertaining to exchanges and markets investment at all. This week we've chosen a book written by former Eurex Chief Innovation Officer and IPO Vid 85 guest Brendan Bradley. ESG Investing for Dummies provides a user accessible guide to investing in a more sustainable world. According to the blurb, this book will allow us to hit this new investing landscape running. Albeit presumably that will be a sustainably violent hitting the landscape running. If you're seeking measurable ways to factor ESG into company performance, this is an excellent starting point. You can find links to the book if you need them on our website, exchangeinvest.com. Product news this week. Banks and investors step up opposition to EU derivatives plans, says the Financial Times. That's the sort of financial story that once upon a time the Financial Times used to do very, very well. But nowadays, of course, it is the Brussels Bugle. Nonetheless, it's fascinating that the Brussels Bugle is obviously considerably concerned about the activities of its subscriber base in the Belgian capital, which is, of course, also the European Union's capital. Sending that faithful Brussels subscriber base truth, also known as a message they don't want to hear. 
Reality is hitting home amongst the realists in Brussels only seven years on from the first waves of daft post-referendum agate prop when it came to Brexit. At some future juncture, this might reach the left green parties and even those zealots who are just upset at Brexit rather than rational sanguine about how to make the EU better per se. Between Chicago and New York, the CME Group and DTCC, they've received regulatory approval for enhanced Treasury cross-margining arrangements, which will launch in January 2024. Equally, the CME is continuing its retail shift in its core product. They are launching options on micro gold futures. The NSE, the National Stock Exchange of India, they've got SEBI's nod to launch options on NYMEX WTI crude oil and natural gas futures, while Aquas are changing their proprietary rules and going to allow in formerly aggressive proprietary flow. You will have the option to trade with it if you're a market maker on Aquas. The Swiss Stock Exchange, they're proposing big index changes. They're looking at, for example, increasing the number of members of its benchmark SMI by a third. Technology news this week, Nasdaq got the SEC nod for the first exchange AI-driven order type. Meanwhile, various financial developers have been mocking McKinsey's monitoring metrics. That criticism included immensely naive towards McKinsey in an article in eFinancial Careers. It reminded me of the equity gap, perhaps the worst piece of research in the history of the exchange parish, which was also a McKinsey project. On the other hand, it was a good news because it was one of the catalysts for me to start Exchange Invest so that people would actually better understand what went on in exchanges rather than succumbing to the mindless blither of big consultancies. Meanwhile, FESE, the European Securities Exchange Federation, they have helped set up EuroCTP, the company which has been established by European exchanges for the provision of a consolidated tape in the European Union. They've elected Jorge Izaguirre Scharfhausen as the newly elected chair of EuroCTP's supervisory board. He's six security services deputy head and is a welcome board overseer for this initiative, seeking to build a consolidated tape by the European exchanges across the EU. Good work by FASE and the exchanges themselves. Regulation news this week. The Wall Street Journal ran a story, Gary Gensler's plan to control information. Given the fact that The whole of BitCarnage seems to be endlessly Gary Gensler, every other word, being threatened, accused, abused, and so on. And the fact that the mainstream media has finally woken up to the ridiculous and egregious expansion that he's trying to affect from what was the relatively simple metrics by which the original Securities Exchange Act established the SEC. I'm minded to wonder at what stage Gary Gensler became a kind of Kardashian figure in finance. Everywhere you look, he's in the headlines, and at the same time, the quality of media coverage is often so dismally poor, it feels like those who are following the Kardashian clan, or indeed Gary Gensler, are doing so unthinkingly. The SEC, meanwhile, has approved funding amendments to the National Market System Plan governing the Consolidated Audit Trail, which is very, very welcome. In career paths this week, a bit of a crisis in Zurich. The Swiss financial regulator Finma, their CEO, has quit in the wake of the collapse of Credit Suisse. Urban Angern will step down at the end of September 2023, Finma said in a statement on Wednesday. He's led the regulator since November 2021 and said he was quitting for health reasons. I do hope his health is okay. It has been an incredibly stressful time for the Swiss regulator over the course of the last two years, and particularly during the course of the last year as Credit Suisse imploded. Japan's stock exchange's board diversity is amongst the worst in the world, and indeed the worst in the parish, which is not exactly a very good look for any bourse. The London Stock Exchange has appointed Charlie Walker, who's been with LSE since 2018 as Deputy Chief Executive Officer, where he'll oversee supporting the daily running of the exchange and the group's primary markets business. At least the welcome news is here that the LSEG has managed to appoint somebody to the LSE from within and not another headhunter special, which became such a joke last year. Finally this week, the sad news and career paths that the veteran banker Elizabeth Sam, uh, who was known as Ms. Mass, died at the age of 84. Mass, of course, was referring to the MAS, the Central Bank of Singapore. But we remember her very fondly in the parish as a two-term CIMEX chairman from 1987 to 1993. A trailblazer not merely for female chairman of exchanges, but for helping create the original CIMEX CME Eurodollar Mutual Offset amongst many other achievements. She was also the character reference for the new president of Singapore, himself an MAS veteran who was elected just days ago. And quite justifiably, she was elected to the FIA Hall of Fame just this year.
From the big world of Singapore to the big world of Poland, while the rest of the world is tightening and central bankers are panicking, the Polish central bank has decided enough is enough, having been very aggressive, first mover advantage in many ways, raisers of rates way back when this western central banks added to their comprehensive roster of incompetence by saying it wasn't an issue. Of course, the tie in the opinion polls a month ahead of a general election with the government scurrying to try and do everything to seek re-election had absolutely nothing to do with this 75 basis point rate cut. And on that mysterious and magnificent note, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Patrick L. Young, creator of Markets the World Over. Ping me a DM if you'd like to create your exchange marketplace or whatever it might be anywhere in the world. And of course, I'm also the publisher of Exchange Invest, the exchange of information, the bulletin of the bourse business coming daily to your inbox. You can subscribe to our weekend edition free at exchangeinvest.com or join us for a free trial of Exchange Invest, the water cooler of the bourse business. Have a great week in life and markets. This show relates to the business of bourses. It is not to be construed as investment advice, nor are we making any investment recommendations. Please consult an investment advisor before you make any investments, and for goodness sake, do your due diligence and do not make investments without complying with the regulations in your home state. Exchange Invest cannot be held responsible for any investment decisions made as a result of our program, which is for entertainment purposes only. The material herein is copyright Patrick L. Young at the date of publication, while our music and sound effects are sourced from copyright-free sources. Thanks for listening to Exchange Invest Weekly, the exchange of information.